Hello, everybody. Time for my the second part of my neutral Knights of the Frozen Throne card review. And we are on to Defax Punisher. A 4 mana 3 3. Battle cry, give a random lifesteal minion in your hand. Plus 2 plus 2. So, a 4 mana 3 3 giving in your hand plus 2 plus 2 is pretty good. You're getting good value for the card. Um, good value out of the card. But giving a lifesteal minion is more valuable. Like buffing a lifesteal minion is more valuable than buffing a an average minion because a lifesteal minion having plus two plus two means you're going to be restoring more health than an average. Whereas giving a an average minion plus two plus two just means it's got plus two plus two. But a lifesteal minion you have plus two plus two plus you're going to be getting extra extra health back if you if you make the most of the lifesteal effect. So <clears throat> what you're getting is nice, but it's obviously only working on lifesteal minions. And there aren't that many lifesteal minions uh, <laughs> at all, really. There's the, uh, the Acolyte of Agony, the Priest lifesteal minion. There's the Paladin Chillblade Champion, which could be the one it's most likely to be used with if, if it did get used, because having charge and lifesteal is a, is a pretty big deal. Um, I think Chillblade Champion is actually a decent card. And uh, yeah, used it with that, it could be pretty nice. Um, other than that, there's really not that much. There's uh, a neutral one mana guy, wherever he is. Okay, I don't know where it is. There's a neutral one mana, one mana Murloc somewhere. Um, and there's Bloodworm. But yeah, I think it's slightly too clunky and situational to, to actually be played. If there was if there was a, a more lifesteal minions, I think this could could actually be good. But I feel like there's not quite enough. Like Paladin would probably be the place to say play this because Wicker Flame Burn Bristle also have life has life steal. So you could be playing like a hand buff, a hand buff Paladin deck where you're playing Death Act Punishers, you're playing Wicker Flame Burn Bristle, you're playing Double Chill Blade Champion. But you would need a bit more than just that. You, you can't really do it with just three life steal minions. So yeah, probably not quite. Uh, Good enough to see any constructive play. And playing a 4 mana 3 3 on its own is obviously not very good. Archer's Veteran, a 1 mana 2 1. Battle Cry, give a friendly minion plus 1 attack. So it's almost like the return of Abusive Sergeant. Abusive Sergeant used to be an extremely popular 1 drop, but then as soon as its attack got changed down to 1 instead of 2, it made a massive difference. And now you just don't see it anymore, man. You just don't see it anymore. It's not, it's not purely because of the fact that this attack got reduced to 1, though. It's also because the meta has changed, and there's a lot of popular... Um, like, 1 health minions are a lot weaker because of things like Firefly and Patches. It's, it's made a massive difference. To, like, Patches alone has just influenced the... Completely changed the, the one, 1 mana minion game. Uh, 1 health 1 drops are just... Bad. Unless there's something Patches. <laughs> Basically. Um... But yeah, this is nice. It's obviously not something you're going to be want to be playing on turn one. You're going to be wanting it playing it uh, when you've already got something on the board to use it on. Uh, but this is a good card. It's a good card. You could play this in some kind of zoo style deck. Um, the downside of this card is it doesn't summon patches. That is the uh, that is that is the downside of this card. But other than that, it's it's great. It's really nice. Yeah, maybe Agro Druid. You're not going to play this in Pirate Warrior, I don't think. Um, maybe some kind of Paladin. Like you can use it with small time recruits in Paladin. Um, like with the new Righteous Protector as well. Maybe some kind of Paladin, some kind of hand buff Paladin that has lots of one drops and you play small time recruits, make the most of that. Play Righteous Protector, play Archer's Veteran. And uh, yeah, that kind of thing could be interesting. Phantom Fire Boot, Freebooter, 4 mana 3 3 Pirate, gain, Battle Cry gain stats equal to your weapons. So, I don't think... I'm not that excited about this card. Well, and I think that's a good thing. I, I don't want this card to be very good. <laughs> and I don't think it is quite good enough to play in Pirate Warrior. Uh, my reasoning is... I think Naga Corsair is just way more consistent. This card is very good if you have a Fiery Warx equipped. 
if you don't have fiery works equipped, it's often just gonna be like if you've had played something like Nazos first mate, and then maybe yeah, attacked with your weapon a couple of times. Like I feel like that's gonna be the most likely scenario when you're playing this, and then it just doesn't feel good enough. Um, obviously, if you there's situations where this card is gonna be great. Like if you've like upgraded your weapon multiple times. And then this can be really strong. So there are situations where this can be very strong. But I do feel like Naga Corsair is just more consistent. Um, this might be a card that you play like a one-off maybe. Because um, there is potential there. Uh, but, and, it's, and it's not something you're going to want to be playing after turn five. Like, it's great when you've... It's great when you if, if you get it with like Arcanite Reaper or something. But after you've played Arcanite Reaper, that's kind of the, the stage where you're literally just going face... Minions don't matter as much anymore because they often just get removed by control decks to things like Dragonfire Potion, etc, etc. Um, so, you're going to have to be, like, you're going to have to be setting this up. And it's it, it almost feels like slightly too situational. Like, a lot of the time you're going to be playing for, to try and get this big rather than, because a lot of the time when, you get, when you're getting your weapon early on, you want to be removing, you want to be going face with your minions and removing your opponent's threats with your weapon. And so you're going to be using your weapon charges on your opponent's minions. But then you kind of want to, going to want to hold your weapon charges back for this minion. And I, I kind of feel like that's just... Like they're kind of going against each other, what, what you're going to try to be doing. So this card is fairly okay. Uh, it's just such a high rolling card. Like sometimes it's going to be amazing. Sometimes it's going to be really good and it can just win you games. But... I feel like it's just not consistent enough. Yeah. Corpse Taker, 4 mana 3 3. Battlecry, gain taunt if your deck has a taunt minion. Repeat for Divine Shield, Lifesteal, Wind Fury. This card is absolutely crazy, man. I love this card. This is one of my favorite cards in the new set because it makes you want to, it makes you really consider deck building like a lot. Like you're thinking, oh, I want a taunt minion in my deck. Oh. Now I've got a Torp minion, I could play Torp Corpse Taker if I have a Divine Shield minion as well. Oh, what about Lester? What about Wind Fury? You could literally just play like... I've been thinking about playing some kind of Paladin deck, because obviously this makes sense. The, the, the two classes that this instantly kind of speaks out to are Shaman and Paladin. Shaman because you can literally just run Alakia, and then you already have Taunt, Divine Shield, and Wind Fury. And that's three of them already, and a 4 mana Taunt, Divine Shield, Wind Fury is a pretty good minion. Um... All you would need to do is put a lifesteal minion in that deck as well, and then you've got the whole shebang. Uh, and in Paladin, you, you already have Taunt, Divine Shield, and Lifesteal just by playing Burn Bristle. Uh, it does have to be in your deck, though, so if you've already drawn Burn Bristle, then this won't be activated by the lifesteal. Uh, and then that almost makes me want to think, oh, I almost, I want to put a Wind Fury minion in my deck. So what about putting something like a Young Dragonhawk or something like that in my deck, just so this card has Wind Fury, because this card has such insane potential. Especially if you're playing buffs. I'm really excited to play this card in some kind of buff paladin deck. Because uh, you can even play like... You can play lots of taunts. Like You're going to be playing Divine Shield minions. Uh, you're probably going to have some taunts in there because you're going to be playing the one mana taunt minion. You're going to be playing Wicker Flame Burn Bristle. Automatically got Divine Shields. So you've automatically got taunt Divine Shield every time. You're probably going to be playing Wicker Flame Burn Bristle. So if that's still in your deck, you're going to be getting lifesteal. And then this is Wind Fury, so... I would maybe even consider putting Young Dragonhawk in my deck just to give this win to you. And the fact that Young Dragonhawk is good with hand buffs as well, because a 1 1 win fury is not that good. But as soon as you start buffing it and making it 2 2, 3 3, etc., then it suddenly becomes a big threat. I can't wait to play this card. <laughs> this card's great. This card's great. Keening Banshee, a 4 on a 5-5. Five, five. Whenever you play a card, remove the top three cards of your deck. This card, it's obviously slightly overstated. However, I feel, I feel like the downside is just not worth it. Like, compared to something like uh, Fel Reaver, which was the 5 mana 8-8 eight, eight, whenever your opponent plays a card, discard three cards from your deck. Um, a 5 mana 8-8 eight, eight is so much better than a 4 mana 5-5. Five, five. I don't think this card is going to be played. Would you ever play this in Arena? Like in Arena, maybe this isn't the worst thing in the world, but... 
if you're playing an aggressive deck, I think you're fairly okay playing this in Arena. But in Constructed, I have no idea why you would play this card. Hmm. <laughs> Tainted Zealot. 2 mana 1 1 Divine Shield spell damage. I like this minion a lot. So we have Cabal Geomancer. This is more difficult to remove than Cobalt Ge Geomancer, uh, which is a good thing for a spell damage minion, because obviously ha it having spell damage is a benefit to you, so you kind of want your, that minion to stick on the board. This card is actually insane with um, Defile, because you play your Tainted Zealot, your 1-1 one, one Divine Shield, and then you Defile, does 2 damage to everything, assuming you're killing something, it Defiles again, it kills your Tainted Zealot, and then you Defile again, <laughs> so, so it's actually like insane that the AoE you can get this you just for four mana with Defile and, and Tate and Zella. And Tate and Zella you can also use with other things in Warlock. You can use it with Drain uh, Drain Soul. Drain Seal. Drain Soul. Uh, and then it can do three damage and then you heal for three with a lifesteal as well, which is nice. You can play Mortal Coil, play Hellfires. So I feel like there's a chance for this card to see playing some kind of control warlock. Definitely there's a chance. Um also rogue potentially rogue with all the kind of razor battles and backstabs and etc that type of thing uh, maybe even some kind of some kind of mage or, or druid they have lots of spells that interact with spell damage but i think warlock uh, warlock is potential and and rogue potential for rogue as well maybe some kind of tempo spell damage rogue even because uh, like even using because it's got divine shield you can even use things like uh Cold Blood on this card. You can use things like Plague Scientist on it. So, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty excited about that card. The Tainted Zealot. Okay. Dreadscale Knight. 1 mana 1 1 Lifesteal Murloc. This is another Lifesteal minion. It's a Murloc. Are you going to want to be playing Lifesteal in a Murloc deck? Probably not. Um, so if you're playing this card, you're probably just going to be playing it for the Lifesteal. But a 1 mana 1 1 is not worth playing it for the lifesteal. So the only situation I can see you wanting to play this card is if you're playing a deck with that has lots of buffs. And so you are actually buffing this minion and you can get more value out of the lifesteal. Um, yeah, that's the only time I can see this being useful. And even then, like say you're playing like a hand of Paladin, for example. Hmm. I don't know, man. I don't think so. I don't think so. Vrygul. 3 mana, 3, 1. Death Rattle. If it's your opponent's turn, summon a 2, 2, Ghoul. So, another minion that has the, the this Death Rattle effect, but if it happens on your opponent's turn. However, this one, I don't think is very good. Um, I would rather just play Eggnapper. It's a 3 mana, 3, 1 that always has the Death Rattle, and it's just summon 2, 1, 1s instead of a 2-2. Two, two. The 1-1s one have the benefit of being a beast as well. Um, I don't know why you would play this card over Eggnapper. So, yeah. So, of all the kind of death rattle, if it's your opponent's turn, summon this, I think this is the worst. Even though, like, I mean, it can still be used for like 3 mana deal 3 damage, or 3 mana deal 3 delayed damage, because your opponent isn't going to want to kill it. So you are going to be able to Trade it into what you want to trade it. But. A lot of the time. But I still don't think it's so good. Like compared to the uh, the warrior one. 3 mana 4, 3. It gains you armor. Like this is inferior. Okay. 4 mana 2, 3. Taunt, battle cry. Some of the copy of this minion. Saranite Chain Gang. I think this is one of the best cards of the set. I think this card is really, really strong. It's, you, you, like, you can compare it to Feral Spirit. Obviously, a minion, it's a minion instead of a spell. Um, overall, you're paying one less mana because Feral Spirit, you're playing three mana and then you're overloaded for two. Um, but this is fantastic with hand buffs. So, Warrior and Paladin. Um, and Hunter has some hand buffs as well. Um, but if you just give this, like... Like, say you play Stolen Goods on this card. You turn two, you play Stolen Goods... Bam, this turns to a 5-6 taunt. And then you coin this out and you have two 5-6 taunts. Like, that is actually insane. <laughs> I think if, if hand buffs, if hand buff decks 
become uh, ever become a thing, I think this card will be one of the main reasons. This card is this card is fantastic with hand buffs. This card is almost kind of exactly what hand buff decks needed because hand buffs aren't really the most aggressive decks. They're more kind of they have slow starts and then come into their own in the mid game where they're playing these overstated minions. And the fact it has torn really really helps with that. Another minion that is good for with this is uh. Well, a couple of minions. Uh, Chill Blade Champion. So you're going to be playing your... In Paladin, for example, you're going to be playing your... Uh, Smuggler's Run and Grand Street Outfitter early on. And then your opponent's going to be playing much bigger minions. But then you play this in the mid-game and it's charging. It's going to be bigger and you're getting your health back as well. And you're getting a lot of health, more health back because it's 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 going to be buffed. Um, and Righteous Protector as well. The fact it has a taunt. Basically... Hand buffs are really nice with more defensive minions. Righteous Protector having Taunt, Chillblade Champion having Lifesteal, and the Chain Gang, Cyanide Chain Gang also having Taunt. Uh, these three cards combined could maybe even make Hand Buff Paladin uh, be a thing. Uh, I love this card. I love this card. And it's it's so good that you don't even need to play it in hand buffs. Like four mana, two, two, two three taunts, is, is, it's just good. You can play this in, like, Taunt Druid. Um, you can play this in anything. You can put this in any deck. <laughs> I don't know, man. This card, is, this card just seems very good to me. It just seems very, very good. Mm. I mean, maybe even some kind of, like, Tempo Quest Warrior. Mm. Okay. Wretched Tiller, 1 mana 1 1. Whenever this minion attacks, deal 2 damage to the enemy hero. Um, this card just seems bad, right? <laughs> I, I can't see this ever being played, right? The only time this is ever going to be. Uh, any time this is ever going to be seen is from like Maelstrom Portal. It's a pretty interesting thing to get from Maelstrom Portal. Because uh, your opponent could be like, oh, he's going to do 2 damage to my face if I don't kill the Wretched Tiller. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, and same with the uh, Dread Scale Knight. This could be another one that's fairly interesting to get from Maelstrom Paul. You could be in a fairly bad spot as Shaman, but you get this, and then you can end up using like Flame Totem or Bloodlust with the Dread Scale Knight to heal a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think those two cards are... Well, especially Wretched right Tiller, like, this is not... You don't want to play this in the deck. Three mana, two, four, Death Speaker. Battlecry, you're a friendly minion immune, immune this turn. So this is definitely better than Stable Master because of the fact that you can use it on anything. Also, you can use this in any class. Stable Master was the 4-2, give a friendly beast uh, immune, which wasn't a bad card. Um, but Hunter just didn't have enough things that you want to use immune on uh, in the early game. and That type of thing. I This is one of the cards I found hardest to actually decide how good I think it is because giving a friendly minion immune is a powerful effect like you could essentially like save its life like say you have an 8-8 and your opponent has an 8-8 you literally just protect it uh, kill an 8-8 and save your 8 you're essentially summoning an 8-8 with this card because the 8 is going off and then you're getting another 8-8 that's basically what's happening so this card has extremely high potential but what deck are you going to play this in? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I actually have no idea what deck you're going to play this in. Um, it's, good in it's good if there's a meta where there is a lot of trading going on. If there's a very minion heavy meta and there's lots of kind of trading going on, you can get really good um, value out of this by, protect by trading off your opponent's minion and uh, keeping your minion alive. Like things with charge, maybe even like Chillblade Champion, I don't know. Yeah. Huh. But Yeah, it's 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 a hard one to say what you're gonna play this in. I don't know. Three minute toy for two four is obviously slightly underpowered stats, but like this is, I think this is better in aggressive decks because you're, 
You, then you, if, the, if you have nothing on the board, this is really bad. You have to actually have something on the board. I'm almost thinking, do you play this in Pirate Warrior? I don't know, man. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. But that type of deck where you're, you're, you're getting minions on the board early and trying to keep your minions alive. I mean, you're not going to play it in Pirate Warrior because in Pirate Warrior, you're removing your opponent's uh, minions with weapons. But this deck, this card makes the most sense in a deck where you're playing lots of early minions, but you don't have weapons to, to clear off your own opponent's minions. And so you need to kill your opponent's minions with your minions, but it's also keeping your minions alive. Like, that's the type of thing where, where you want to use this. Um, yeah, this card's cool. Drakari Enchanter, 3 minute 1 5, your end of turn effects trigger twice. So it's similar to Bran, where uh, your Battle Cry is triggered twice. This is your end of turn effects. It's a 1 5, which is worse stats than a 2 4. Um, and also, there is a lot more Battle Cries in the game than there are end of turn effects. End of turn effects, there really aren't that many. There's a couple of uh, new ones that are pretty good. There's the, um, the Warlock minion. The Despicable Dreadlord at the end of your turn deal one damage to all minions. It could do two two damage to all minions at the end of turn, which is nice. Like that's a pretty good one to get it with. Uh, Shadow Ascendant is another new one at the end of your turn. Give another random minion plus one plus one. That's a pretty good card, but are you really going to be playing that with the one five? I, I I I'm not sure. Lich King is another another good end of turn effect. Uh, Rag Light Lord is another one, but that's that's about it. <laughs> There's not that many, and so I can't see this seeing play in Constructed. Um, I think this is more likely to see play in Wild. Using this with Emperor is pretty insane. Getting two ticks off Emperor can allow for some crazy things. So in Wild, I think this is a lot more likely to see play than in Standard. Uh, it is an Epic, though, so it's not a Legendary, so you can play two of it. That is one That is one bonus of it. But um, You're going to need to be playing a significant amount of end-of-turn effects for this to be worth it, and I don't think there's enough end-of-turn effects for this to be worth playing currently. Mindbreaker, 3 mana 2, 5, hero powers are disabled. This is good after a Death Knight has been played. Your opponent's played a Death Knight, they can't use your hero power. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's very good after um, Warrior has completed their quest and denies them the rag hero power. But realistically, I can't see this seeing any playing constructed. Uh, it's something you're not really going to be want to playing on turn 3. 3 mana 2, 5 is uh, not that crazy and it's I don't think the I don't think the the uh, the effect is quite good enough so could be an interesting one in arena um, if hero powers become if, if, it, if the game comes to there are certain decks that are just using their hero power every single turn then maybe this could be kind of kind of good but in the early game, people are trying not generally trying not to use the hero powers, and so it's only in the later game where where these new Death Knight hero powers and the Quest Warrior hero power can be impactful. So I don't think this is going to be played because it's not a three drop you're going to be wanting to play on turn three, um, and it's not even that impactful later in the game. So no, I, I don't think this card will see any playing constructed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is the uh, second part of my neutral card review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Really looking forward to trying out uh, some of these cards in some different decks. Especially Corpse Taker. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, see you in the next video.